What's happening, YouTube, Reddit? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. Um, I'm wearing a mask, uh, and that's for your protection. I was in contact with someone with COVID, and it turns out uh, my uh, phone is really good at catching viruses. And the last thing I'd want to do is get all my subscribers uh, sick through the internet. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to keep this on to everyone's safety. Anyway, so I make videos on plants, shrimp, and fish for beginners. And a lot of beginners, where they first start, are at PetSmart, Petco. So we're going to do a couple plants today, and I'm going to show you what to do. Now, the first one here is called Red Undulata, which is also uh, red cryptocorns. So the first thing we want to do here, so I'm going to open this. We're going to get right into it. All right, so we got a clear plastic bag. All of this gel down here is called agar. Um, I have explained before in videos, but just in case you haven't watched them and, and you are new, anytime you have a tissue culture plant that's in agar, like this, it causes a plant, uh, stem plants are the only exception, um, it causes uh, dwarfism, meaning the size that they are in the bag that's about as big as they're going to get in your tank. And the reason that this happens is it has to do with the plant's kind of defense system. These bags are filled with the, uh, this is loaded with nutrients, a bunch of sugar and protein and other things that they need. But also the bag is loaded with oxygen and CO2. Now, these plants, when they're in here, uh, they're given enough nutrients and oxygen and CO2 to last for a couple weeks. Well, in that couple weeks... Uh, the plant will actually start to grow. When it gets towards the top of the bag, what happens is the plant goes into fence mode. It goes, oh my gosh, there's no more room in here. This is all the nutrients I'm going to have and all the oxygen and CO2 I'm going to have for the rest of my life. So it stunts its growth. It stops growing because it thinks it's not going to be able to get any larger without killing itself. So whenever you're <clears throat> planting it in like... Uh, Cryptocorns, in general, most of them, unless you're dealing with uh, Cryptocorn Parva or Cryptocorn Flamingo or really small crypts. Crypts like these, you know, they can say they can get up to like six, eight inches, even larger. Well, look at this. What is that? About three inches. And if you watch prior videos, you've seen where I've planted this plant before months and months ago. And it'll slowly ditch all its leaves because these leaves were grown uh, immersed. I mean, not even immersed. They weren't even grown in water. They were grown in gel. Uh, so they've never been in water, period, and they've never experienced um, bacteria either. So it's going to start to die off really quickly, but the roots will be okay. Uh, so first we want to get the agar off. So to get the agar off, we're just going to kind of slip this out of the bag. Obviously, make sure your hands are really clean. You know, anything you touch is going to get absorbed through the roots. Now, I have this. This is not one plant. This is a lot of plants. So you don't want to just take this whole thing and then just stick it in your tank and think it's going to be okay. So I have uh, cycled tank water here. I'm going to let this sit in here and it's going to dissolve the uh, agar. Uh, it's going to help it dissolve to help it separate. The reason you don't want to leave a bunch of agar on there. Now your plant may or may not do well with the agar still on there. It is nutrient rich. But the problem with it is, is it's very sticky and it clings onto the roots. And if you have too much of it on the roots, it'll suffocate them and cause root rot. And, uh, you know, if you've dealt with plants before, once you got root rot, it's game over for your plant. You know, the whole plant can die on the top, but you can't have your roots dying on you. So, you know, the best of your ability, I have uh, seen people be like, oh, this agar is impossible to get off. Well, the longer you soak it, the easier it is to just slip it off the roots. So we have the red undulata. This is going to soak for a little bit. And while that's soaking, we're going to talk about the second plant. Now, this is a really great plant. Uh, it's a rosette sword uh, type of Amazon. It stays really, really small. This is a true aquatic plant. Okay, now you'll hear... People, a lot of people talking about Amazon swords in general, um, they're not truly aquatic. They can grow immersed, but they can be trained to be um, grown underwater. They will lose all their leaves and then grow new aquatic ones. Whereas a rosette, 
will net. Now, the way you can tell if a plant is truly uh, aquatic or not is if, if, if it's out of the water for longer than 20 minutes, you'll start to see the... Now in here, there's, the humidity is really high and there's a lot of agar in here. Uh, that helps keep the leaves from... Uh, you can see there's a bunch of crud in here. This has slipped out and there's some dead leaves. A true aquatic plant will start to wilt outside of the water within 10, 20 minutes. And I've seen it happen before while I was doing some planting. Um, so first I'm just going to kind of rinse this in my cycled water or you can use dechlorinated water. Just don't use tap water. You know, there's chlorine and chloramine or who knows what you got going on um, in your tap water. And I'm going to, like this leaf, this leaf's no good. I mean, even if I had to snip this whole thing off, What's most important are the roots. See how these roots are white? Let me. These are really healthy roots. See the roots are growing roots. You want to see them right now. If they're brown and mushy, it's already started to die. All this could be green, and you wouldn't even realize that you actually have a dead plant if the roots are a dark, mushy brown, and it leads all the way up to the base of the plant. It's game over. Take your plant back to PetSmart or Petsco, wherever the heck you bought it, and uh, tell them it's no good. Uh, there's another dead leaf. And the reason you want to take off all of the dead leaves is because if you don't, it's going to try to send nutrients to these dead leaves, which is a waste because plants can't repair themselves. So I've explained this before. Uh, you can order plants online. I have found some of the ones that I like that are easy growers, it's actually cheaper to buy them at PetSmart and PetsCo. Uh, any of your Java Fern or Anubias, they'll have dozens of types of Anubias and Java Fern. But I really love different types of Amazons and uh, swords, and you could order from like Aquarium Co-op or uh, Dustin's Fish Tanks or any random, you know, Joe Schmo on Amazon who propagates. They're always going to sell those types of these types of plants for a couple bucks more, and you have to wait on them. Uh, now, to get the rarer plants, you do want to order from those guys. You know, you're, you're not going to find Valisneria or Jungle Val or Dwarf Sagittaria or anything like that um, at a large chain store. And my videos are geared towards beginners and what to do with your plants first before you ever plant them. Uh, so. Now that I've trimmed off some of that, what I want to do is these roots are already really long. And it's okay to kind of, oh, I got one root here that's kind of cruddy. You kind of want to snip the tips. And the reason you snip the tips, because what that does is it turbocharges the root and signals it to go, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm damaged. I need to start absorbing a lot of nutrients as possible. And it'll start sending it up to the leaves and then growing uh, new ones. Uh, if you stick them in like this without trimming the tips, that doesn't mean it won't do okay. It's just going to take longer. And also with the root this long, it had already established itself inside of this container. And it established itself in that container by growing in circles, circles and circles and circles. And you got this really long root that's going to be difficult to stick down into the substrate without it wanting to fold up on you and be popping out like that. So, trim them down. It's okay. Don't be scared. Trim it down. The, the roots will come back, especially your heavy root feeders like this. They start growing roots really heavily. Then, then oh, I've got a leaf ready to go. So, yeah, I'll just pluck that off. All right. So, uh, here we go. And like this, this is just like a half a, half a stem worthless. Cut that off. Another little half a stem here. Cut that off. Cut off anything that's going to take take away from the good stuff. And uh, don't be shocked if one by one these, you know, start to wilt and die on you. That's just the way of things. Um, never do you want to plant an aquatic plant and you see it like all of a sudden after a week just everything dies. Just start ripping stuff out. It, you don't want to do that. You're going to have to have some patience. And I'm sorry to say that if you make a fully planted tank, it's going to take months. It, you can't just plant a tank and expect everything to look as it is. 
Um, especially if it was grown immersed like this. It's got to ditch all its leaves and grow new ones that are um, compatible with being underwater. And uh, because there's a lot less CO2 underwater, obviously. So uh, I've trimmed this the way that uh, I would like. So I'm going to put this in my tank water and we will go back to the red undulatus. Yes, this video is running a little bit longer than normal because I'm doing two plants. So the red cryptocorn, the dwarf, and I'm putting this in a small breeder tank. The, this is why I don't care that it's not going to get that big. I'm going to make, you know, uh, I'm carpeting with this. So the agar hasn't fully dissolved yet. You can start, you know, kind of pulling some off if you want. It can tend to be a little difficult on you. So right here, I'm letting this fold like a rainbow. It's giving me an idea of how many plants I have. So look, I have one here, I have one here, I have one here, and one here. So it looks like I got four, which is awesome. Uh, they are all going to be connected together, not by the same root, but by roots that have entangled themselves. <coughs> Excuse me, by growing through this agar. So this will help if I just go ahead and you're going to have to trim trim the roots anyway. So I'm just going to snip. Snip again. And snip again here. All right. And you can even make more. I mean, if you've got a few leaves connected with, you know, two roots, that'll make a whole new plant also. So it just depends on how patient you are, you know. I got four out of here, but I could easily get more if I wanted to uh, just by splitting this up even more and then making a slit right in between, um, right in between if I wanted to. But yes, don't leave the agar. I mean, you can leave a little, that's fine, but don't leave all of it. And so here's the bottom. You can see how it's, let me see if I can point this out to you better. This is just one big line of roots that are completely saturated in agar. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and ditch all those anyway. And the same with all plants. Every video, if you've followed me for a while, um, I do have dozens of videos and they're all geared towards plants. Um, I do have some over uh, fish and shrimp also, but it all starts with plants. Plants are the most important. So now I'm looking on here. You want to see that the roots are kind of separating and they're not clumped together by the agar because that's what causes the suffocation and, and will start the root rot process that you don't want. So I want it, I want it to be stringy. See how it's kind of starting to rinse this off a little bit more. All right, that's, oh, here we go. Really long root. And like I said, Trimming the roots always helps with new plants. Um, even if you buy it from a nursery where it was submerged, um, it's going to take some time to acclimate to your tank. And snipping the tips of the roots really jumpstarts its um, adjustment period into your into your tank. Um, you know, so that's why you want to do that. It's just going to start soaking up the nutrients as much as possible. And anytime you do a dirty tank, you always want to cap it with something else. So all of the nutrients from the soil, or if you're using an aquatic soil, um, the uh, nutrients from that soil isn't leaching into the water column, causing your total dissolved solids to go up. Um, you, I've talked about that before. With plants, if you want them to photosynthesize, you can't go over 400 TDS. Um, they do prefer it uh, lower. Uh, your plant will grow faster in a TDS of about um, 150 would be good. General hardness, um, a lot of plants do prefer your general hardness to be kind of on the lower spectrum. There are some plants that don't mind hard water. It just depends. But all of them in general will do okay as long as your general hardness doesn't go above uh, 150 parts per million, um, and then your carbonate hardness, um, around eight. Uh, and I've explained before on how to do the math. If 
you read, oh, it needs a carbon hardness of 8. To do the math on that for parts per million, you would do 8 times 17.9. And it's the same for general hardness. So if it says, if you're, it says your plant will do best in a general hardness of 5, that would be 5 times 17.9. And whatever that number is, that will be parts per million. And it, it, it really makes no sense to me as to why they would even go that route. Because any testing strips or even an API master test strip, they test in parts per million. So saying you need a four general hardness doesn't help you at all. What's happening, dude? Doing a video on some plants? Just get home from school? Hey, come say hi to the uh, our internet friends. Our video is about the end. Hi. Say, hey, uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to like. We do plants. We do plants. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. Again, this is uh, Red Undulata. Get as much of that agar off as you can. Expose all the roots as they are here. And then you can just simply insert it in there and fill it up. You're not going to add any fish for quite some time. Like I said, it's a slow process. It's going to take several months, especially for crips. Um, you know, these take a long time for each leaf to just fall off. And you will see, like, this one's kind of red. Every new leaf that grows is going to be solid green, unless you add a lot of uh, iron um, supplements to your uh, tank. That'll help keep it red. Um, but uh, there we go. And I will form kind of like a a spear with this. Stick it straight down. Bring the soil around it. Let it go. Boom, we're done. Oh, the other one's home. What's happening, dude? Hey. All right. All the kids are home. We're going to end this video. I think I described everything perfectly, but if you have any questions, leave a comment before, below, and I will get say hi. This hi. is Adam. Hey, hello. Ho, ho. All right. So I'm going to let this soak for a little bit longer, get the rest of that agar off of there. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, keep following. We do plants. Talk about fish. A little bit of shrimp. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye. Say bye, everyone. Bye.